I'm Peter Block here at TCT 2018, and this is the wrap-up of the final two days of TCT. With me on my left is Deepak Bhatt uh, from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, Deepak, we've got a couple of trials to talk about yes. for these last two days. The ultimate trial, which is an IVIS versus angiographic trial, and prepare calc, an interesting trial with road ablation. So let's start with the ultimate trial, IVIS versus angiographic evaluation of stenting. I've never been a big lover of the IVIS because I thought, eh, do I really want to do another procedure? <laughs> um, Deepak, on the other hand, thinks it's a great tool, so it turns out I may have to change my mind. Yeah, I think IVIS is actually really useful for helping size things appropriately, make sure there's good stent apposition. But, you know, that's anecdote. Now we have some really good data that previously been suggestive data, meta-analyses, but here we have a single trial that really does show a significant difference in things like target vessel failure and even things like stent thrombosis are heading in the right direction. It's actually not a surprise. You know, the IVIS tells you so much about edge dissection, uh, what exactly the size is, even if you post dilate or need to post dilate. Right. And it also tells you about whether or not the plaque has been pushed aside or squeezes through or whatever. So I think the information is really useful that you get from IVIS. I asked the lead author of this paper uh, whether or not he would use IVIS on every one of his stent implantations. And he looked at me and said, well, I do most of the time, but when I don't do it, it's because I'm in the middle of the night and I don't have time. <laughs> but the answer is I think that you probably should. Well, I mean, that's the real issue, right? It's one of time. I, I actually think it is a good idea to routinely do IVIS. One could maybe say OCT, though this trial didn't study OCT. A little bit of extra contrast there. But the, the downside is it can slow down the cath lab a bit. I mean, I, I do like to IVIS and or OCT a lot, also FFR and IFR a lot. But it does you know, occasionally elicit a groan from the staff in the room because it slows down the flow of the day, right? If you've got a bunch of cases to do, uh, it, it, it certainly doesn't make things go quicker. So that's the downside, I think, and, and the cost issues. Yeah, the techs roll their eyes, but I think what you need to teach them, and I think we will, is that you get much more information. You do, but I also wonder, this also elicits uh, some displeasure. I mean, I like to do things on higher mag. I get it that that's more radiation and everything, but I think you can size your stent much more appropriately as mathematics and physics would dictate if it's a higher mag. And I think there, you know, if you put in a 3.0 instead of a 2.5, the incremental benefit of Ivacing or OCT might be less, especially if you put that 3.0 in at high pressure. You I know? would agree. We use 7 inch most of the time, and that helps a lot rather than 8 or 10. Yeah, we use 8, a, and I must yeah. say, I, I grew up on 6, so uh, 8 is actually challenging for me. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Prepare calc. Now, there's an interesting study, right? Road ablation against. Uh, you know, some other kind of balloon that will allow you to prepare uh, the lesion for a stent. Uh, and for the road ablation buffs, this is a big win. Absolutely. No, Patrick Whitlow would be proud. <laughs> former mentor of mine, real pioneer in, in complex intervention and road ablation. And I, I must say I thought the trial was well done. It answers the question, I think, pretty well. That if you've got a really calcified lesion and you're going to use some adjunctive device, road ablation is better than a cutting balloon. But, but I must say I personally wouldn't have reached for a cutting balloon in the first place in that situation. That is, I wouldn't see highly calcified tight lesion. Let me use the cutting balloon. Yeah. I, I would agree with that entirely, but in this trial, that's what they... Uh, put the rotoblader up against. And I think the difference was something like 80-something versus 97% yeah, success, the success rate with the rotoblader really being different. the winner. On the other hand, the interesting thing that they did with this trial was if they couldn't get there with a cutting balloon or some other modified balloon, they would simply cross over these patients immediately. Right. And once they crossed the patients over, then their success rate for the whole group was extraordinarily high, in the high 90s. Um, I asked the... Uh, uh, principal investigator uh, during another interview, well, should we throw away all of our modified balloons? Would you just go to rotoblader? And he said, ah, not exactly. Maybe I would, on occasional patients where the calcium isn't so severe, where there was a real angulation I was worried about, maybe go for a modified balloon first, knowing that I could then switch to rotablation and end up with a good result. You know, that's a good point. And in terms of procedural time, it was a bit longer with the rotablator than the cunning balloon. So maybe it, I, I didn't give it enough credit. I mean, it, it could have been, if it were positive for cutting balloon, a, a great way to simplify a procedure and, and do it more cheaply. So, um, yeah, I think it was, after all, an important question. And uh, even though the answer is what I might have expected, still adds to our knowledge. But what do you think, is it okay to extrapolate to orbital atherectomy? I, I must say I'm doing a lot more 
more of that. It's, it's more expensive than rotoblader. Sometimes people say, why are you doing that? But it is easier to set up. That is, you don't, you're not dependent on anyone in the room. You can just set it up on yeah. the table yourself. You know, I don't know the answer to that. It has other issues that have to do with it, or lathorectomy as well. On balance, I think it's about a wash with rotoblation, but I'm not sure. We need a trial, I guess. Yeah, I think that would be a good trial to do. Yeah. I don't actually think one would necessarily be superior to the other. It's just quicker and easier to set up the orbital, but more expensive. Yeah, I'll bet and, on and, non-inferiority. And you, I bet on that, too. But, and you also wouldn't want to do it on you know, an osteo left main, for example, or an osteo right. You could unwrap, uh, perhaps, the aorta. Right. But uh, okay. good stuff there, I think. Good stuff for interventionalists in day three and four.